Hi, Esther. Thanks for having me on. The, the food security situation in Sudan is, is truly catastrophic. Uh, as you mentioned, um, the, the recent report, uh, we also have the IPC report that highlights 755,000 people are suffering, suffering from catastrophic hunger and a further 8.5 million are suffering from emergency levels of food insecurity across Sudan. Uh, it's been more than a year of intense conflict, and, and most families have depleted their, their resources and coping strategies. Some of them have sold belongings uh, and assets such as livestock for, uh, to be able to purchase food and other uh, essential items. Our, our team in Central Darfur uh, reports in some health clinics that Mercy Corps supports. Roughly three to four children are dying per day of malnutrition-related causes. Uh, many organizations are very cautious to declare a famine. Uh, would you say that what you saw in Sudan meets the criteria that this should be declared as a famine? Uh, as you mentioned, the, the Famine Review Committee pointed out in their, their report released yesterday that North Darfur is confirmed to have famine conditions. Uh, and as you rightly point out, the report stipulates that this could potentially apply to other states and localities in IPC Phase 5 hunger such as the remaining Darfur states, the Kordofans, Al Jazeera, and Khartoum. Uh, but for them, there's not enough data to make a determination. For, for us as Mercy Corps, it's less about whether a formal famine declaration will be announced. We're seeing the tragic effects happening now. We're seeing children dying of malnutrition. We're seeing households struggling to come up with daily meals. We're seeing humanitarian aid blocked from reaching its intended targets. And Esther, quite frankly, the, the heartbreaking reality of all this is that the window to significantly reduce the impact of what we're seeing as the largest hunger crisis in decades is rapidly closing. This is because the, the IPC data and the, the data that the FRC reviews is, is lagging indicators, meaning that by the time they review those, uh, those pieces of data, um, it's most likely already too late to, to act and save lives. You know, uh, Merit, what do we as aid organizations like Masiko and others that are working in Sudan need to do to save lives? Yeah, Mercy Corps and uh, along with uh, numerous other aid organizations, we need unimpeded humanitarian access to reach the hardest areas of Sudan. Um, the Darfurs, the Kordofans, Al Jazeera, parts of Khartoum. We need the political dialogues to yield positive outcomes towards a, a peaceful resolution to the conflict. And we need a well-funded, well-coordinated, well-mobilized international donor community to step up its aid commitments. And what do you want the world to know about this crisis? There's so much about the war. We talk about the RSF, the Rapid Support Forces, and the Sudanese Army. But what else besides those two fighting? What is the toll that this has taken on the people of Sudan? Uh, in, uh, in the coming days and weeks, I think the world will be debating whether or not uh, official famine thresholds have been met. Um, but they also need to know that, that this is a purely man-made crisis that is primarily conflict-induced, meaning that in, until the guns and airstrikes and drone strikes and everything else that is, that is happening conflict-wise in, in Sudan is silenced, that hunger will continue to stalk the people of Sudan. This is especially important now as, as Sudan is in its lean season. Um, and aid impediments continue, that, uh, that we believe the hunger situation will continue to deteriorate over, over the coming weeks and months.